is the King of glory, how shall we call him? He is Emmanuel, the promised of ages. The King of glory comes, the nation rejoices. Open the gates before him, lift up your voices. In all of Galilee, in city or village, he goes among his people, curing their illness. The King of glory comes, the nation rejoices. Open the gates before him, lift up your voices. Sing then of David, son of our Savior and brother. In all of Galilee was never another. The King of glory comes, the nation rejoices. Open the gates before him, lift up your voices. He gave his life for us, the pledge of salvation. He took upon himself the sins of the nation. The King of glory comes, the nation rejoices. Open the gates before him, lift up your voices. He conquered sin and death, he truly has risen. And he will share with us his heavenly vision. The King of glory comes, the nation rejoices. Open the gates before him, lift up your voices. Good evening and welcome to St. Thomas More Church as we celebrate the Feast of Christ the King. Uh, if you have your uh, cell phones with you, please turn them to the uh, quiet mode. And uh, our celebrant tonight is our pastor, Father Basamafi. Please join in the singing of the hymns throughout the Mass and we'll start with the gathering and your uh, breaking bread, number 138.
the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Dear friends, as we come before the presence of the Lord, our Lord and King, let us acknowledge our own shortcomings in order to celebrate this sacred mystery in a worthy manner. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O oh God Almighty Father, glory to God in the Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, whose will is to restore all things in your beloved Son, the King of the universe, grant, we pray, that the whole creation, set free from slavery, may render your majesty's service and ceaselessly proclaim your praise. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Samuel. In those days, all the tribes of Israel came to David in Hebron and said, here we are, your bone and your flesh. In days past, when Saul was our king, it was you who led the Israelites out and brought them back. And the Lord said to you, you shall shepherd my people Israel. 
and shall be commander of Israel. When all the elders of Israel came to David in Hebron, King David made an agreement with them there before the Lord, and they anointed him king of Israel. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm can be found in your Green Gather book, page 120, Psalm 122. Let us go rejoicing. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. 
Brothers and sisters, let us give thanks to the Father who has made you fit to share in the inheritance of the Holy Ones in light. He delivered us from the power of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him were created all things in heaven and on earth, the visible and the invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created through him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he himself might be preeminent. For in him all the fullness was pleased to dwell, and through him to reconcile all things for him, making peace by the blood of his cross, through him, whether those on earth or those in heaven. The word of the Lord. Thanks. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. The rulers sneered at Jesus and said, He saved others, let him save himself. If he is the chosen one, the Christ. Even the soldiers jeered at him, as they approached to offer him wine, they called out, If you are king of the Jews, save yourself. Above him, there was an inscription that read, This is the king of the Jews. Now, one of the criminals hanging there reviled Jesus, saying, Are you not the Christ? Save yourself and us. The other, however, rebuking him, said in reply, Have you no fear of God? For you are subject to the same condemnation. And indeed, we have been condemned justly. For the sentence we received corresponds to our crimes. But this man has done nothing criminal. Then he said, Jesus Remember me when we come into your kingdom. Jesus replied to him, Amen, amen, I say to you, today you'll be with me in paradise. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today, as we celebrate the solemnity of our Lord Jesus Christ, the King of the universe, we are invited to look at our lives and our world and ask ourselves who really rules over our lives and in our world today. Is Jesus 
our Lord and King, as we celebrate him as the King of the universe. Our second reading tells us that he delivered us from the power of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of our sins. This presupposes that the kingship that we are talking about is not a worldly kingdom, but that of heaven, that of peace, joy, forgiveness. Do we recognize Jesus as our king and our Lord? In our first reading, we find the Israelites coming together, recognizing that now they have to be one. So they look up to David and tell him, you are our own flesh. We all come from one father. So we want you to be our leader, to be our king. They recognize that David could bring all of them together and fight for them as one people. Our God, our Lord Jesus Christ, if all of us could recognize that he is our leader, he is our guide, he is the savior of the world, then we will also recognize that we are one. If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself and save us. The rulers at that time recognized that yes, he could bring them together, save himself and save all of them. Jesus, the name, the savior, means he came to bring all of us together, the savior of the world. Even the criminals, they also recognized who he was, but as to whether they were going to benefit from his redemption, is only one who had that opportunity. Paul's, the first one, was asking, are you not the Christ? Save yourself and us. The other one said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. So Jesus is the savior of the world. But if you don't recognize him as your savior, as your guide, as your ruler, you may not benefit from his power or the kingdom that he has prepared for you and I. So how do you see Jesus and how do you allow him to rule over your life? Do you want to be part of this kingdom? And this kingdom, as I said, is not that of the world. It's the kingdom of peace. We hear in the second reading that by his suffering on the cross, Jesus himself has offered himself on the cross like the altar we offer the sacrifice every day to bring us back to the Father. That is the work of the Savior, to save us. He also gives us that opportunity to come back to the Father no matter what. So this is the kingdom of forgiveness, a kingdom of love that Jesus offers us. And he's inviting you and I to also live out that kingdom wherever we find ourselves, this kingdom of love. So you and I need to subject ourselves to God's kingdom. And this is through the following of the commandments of God. And as you know, the commandments can be summed up 
in love of God and then love of neighbor. So we, when we talk about the kingdom of love, that is what it means. St. Paul in the second reading also depicts this to us. He says, all things were created through him and for him. He is before all things and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. As we come together as a family of God, the church, the church also teaches us or shows us the way to guide us so we can allow the church to also rule over us, to show us what we need to do to be part of this kingdom. This kingdom is also a kingdom of truth and justice. As we ask God for forgiveness, we are called to do the right thing, to seek for justice and seek for the truth. This is the only way that can bring lasting peace to each and every one of us as members of the family of God, the kingdom of God. So as we come together to celebrate this solemnity, we bring the church's liturgical year to an end. But as individuals, we are called to look at our own lives and see that which guides us, that which rules over us, that which brings us together as a family. We pray and we want Jesus to be our king, to be our Lord, to lead us and to guide us to the Father. So as we strive to follow his commandments as our rule of life, may he remember us like the thief prayed when he comes into his kingdom and when our time comes for us to also go to where he has prepared for us. We pray in this mass that the Lord will help us to allow him to rule over us as our King and our Lord. Let us profess our faith. I believe in one Lord, God Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Even as Jesus hung dying, he answered the prayer of the crucified thief. We trust now that God will answer our petitions. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. For the church, the body of Christ, that it be a leaven of hope for all in the world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For the world, that all who govern tend first to the needs of the poor. 
we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That as we make our commitment to the diocesan annual appeal, and as Thanksgiving approaches, we may remember God's generosity to us and share what we can. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an increase of vocations to the priesthood, diaconate, religious life, and lay ministry, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the repose of the souls of our departed relatives and friends, especially those being remembered on our All Souls Day envelopes, and Mary Elaine Pontoski, for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the prayers in the prayer baskets and any personal prayer that we may now wish to place before the Lord in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We ask the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary as we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and in the hour of our death. Amen. Everlasting and almighty God, and thrown upon the cherubim, hear our humble prayers and grant them in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our second collection today is for the Catholic Campaign for Human Development. Our preparation hymn is number 466, The King of Love My Shepherd Is.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. As we offer you, O Lord, the sacrifice by which the human race is reconciled to you, we humbly pray that your Son himself may bestow on all nations the gifts of unity and peace. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you anointed your only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, with the oil of gladness, as eternal priest and king of all creation, so that by offering himself on the altar of the cross, as a spotless sacrifice to bring us peace, he might accomplish the mysteries of human redemption and making all created things subject to his rule. He might present to the immensity of your majesty an eternal and universal kingdom, a kingdom of truth and life, a kingdom of holiness and peace, a kingdom of justice, love, and peace. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, heaven and earth are full, are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes, who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son, present in our midst when we are gathered by his love, and when, as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said a blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
their mystery of faith. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church, in which we show forth the Paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the Spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. By our partaking of this mystery, Almighty Father, give us life through your Son. Grant that we may be conformed to the image of your Son and confirm us in the bond of communion together with Francis, our Pope, Joseph, our Bishop, with all other bishops, with priests and deacons, and with your entire people. Grant that all the faithful of the Church, looking into the signs of the times by the light of faith, may constantly devote themselves to the service of the gospel. Keep us attentive to the needs of all that sharing their grief and pain, their joy and hope. We may faithfully bring them the good news of salvation and go forward with them along the way of your kingdom. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face, and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us, when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever, there in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and martyrs, St. Thomas More, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Let us offer each other the sign of Christ's peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Spiritual Communion Prayer. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you in my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. communion hymn is number 736 to Jesus Christ our sovereign king
Jesus, Lord, and Anima Christi, soul of Christ, sanctify me, body of Christ, save me, blood of Christ, inebriate me, water from the side of Christ, wash me, passion of Christ, strengthen me. O good Jesus, hear me, within your wounds, hide me, separated from you, let me never be. From the evil one, protect me. At the hour of my death, call me. And close to you, bid me, that with your sins, I may be praising you forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Having received the food of immortality, we ask, O Lord, that glory, glorying in obedience to the commands of Christ, the King of the universe, we may live with him eternally in his heavenly kingdom who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth in peace. The Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and sinners of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly hosts, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all evil spirits who prowl the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Thanks for coming and have a wonderful weekend. Our closing hymn is number 571, Festival Canticle. But uh, I have a little announcement before we, we start to sing. Please, consider joining our church choir. It can be a lot of fun and a really meaningful way to worship and prepare for the season. If you would like to join us for the Advent Christmas season, we would love to have you join us. We will begin practices the first week of Advent Additional information will be in the bulletin next weekend, or you can reach out to a member of the choir. Thank you.
Now we can sing.